Good morning all. New printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Let's open the box without further ado. And here they are, and I've done them in a rather fetching red. Let's have a look inside the bag. So this is a concept um, related to Arduino. And it is, well, you can see there that uh, they're not complicated. And in fact, I didn't even draw a schematic for this. I just went straight to the PCB designer. Let's come down a little bit. And uh, just did it really using it like a graphics package. So I just put a load of pads on here for the Nano. Uh, another position here for my OLED. And a couple of positions here for sensors. I'm thinking particularly of the uh, uh, humidity and temperature sensor. In fact, let's bring in the things that are going to go on this board. And they're sitting on this breadboard and functioning right now. And it should be possible to simply transfer these items over onto this Arduino playboard. And it should just work. Now, there are a couple of issues with this, and I'll uh, go into those in just a moment. Right, let's kind of do this live. That'll be fun. Uh, actually, I can't quite do it live, can I? So let's pull that out. So the idea is that the OLED fits up here, sits there like that. My sensor, which is the SI7021 temperature and humidity sensor, fits in there. Or it could fit in here. Let's put it in there so it's slightly more sort of symmetrically laid out and the Arduino Nano which is going to take a little bit of coaxing out of this breadboard quite a lot of coaxing goes there and that fits rather well now is it going to work without soldering let's give it a try here's my power we we'll get a few flashes while it enumerates the USB. And probably not because these connections are all going to be a bit loose. So let's reboot it. Reboot. <laughs> Am I going to have to solder this thing? I was hoping not to. And with some sneaky use of Bluetech, I've managed to get all the connections to fit, but everything is bent up at funny angles, including the Arduino Nano. I don't really want to solder these because um, I want to be able to put them back in the breadboard. But you can probably guess what one of the issues is now. I really should have made this whole size a little bit smaller so that the Arduino, no, the DuPont sort of square section pins that you get on these modules were an interference fit in there. Now I've done it before because I did it on the vocoder boards. Um, so I know what size is the right size. I didn't think to do it on this board. And the other issue is really one of videography. I should have made this landscape instead of portrait. But I'm sure you get the idea. This is designed to take um, a series of modules to make a particular project. In this case, it's the temperature and humidity uh, sensor. Now I've done, I've used the characters which are in the numeric fonts to fashion a very crude percent sign. <laughs> it's just slash dot and a very crude degrees sign. The numeric font only has about eight other characters in it. Um, so they're rather crude symbols and I can't have a C there. So you just kind of have to take my word that it's 22 degrees Celsius. But yeah, that's my Arduino Playboard. So really the concept is it's a printed circuit board designed not to take any components, but instead designed to take these pre-made modules, which you can buy cheaply on eBay. Right, this is really hurting my fingers holding that nano at that precarious angle in order to get it to, oh, it just seems to be staying there. Oh, that's rather good. So certainly see that the concept works. Um, now, we'll if, if I put this 
BMP 280 sensoring, will it crash it? It'll look nice. No, it hasn't crashed it. So, oh, the Arduino slipped. How annoying. Let's push that back out. Press reset. Hope it reboots. It did. So, yes, it looks rather good with all its sensors in place. It would look even better if I didn't have to have Bluetack pushing everything up. And if I'd gone for smaller holes, so these things were an interference fit. If you get the hole size right, then the holes in the board act, act pretty much as sockets. It behaves as its own socket. So let me show you that on the vocoder boards. So take this board, for example, this uh, daughter board. It, well, you could call it a module. It's a bit like uh, these, I suppose, in that respect. It's soldered in because I had to, because I put some mod wires on the back. But this one is not. It's just a push fit and you can pull it out. And it's sufficiently tight um, that it makes a reasonably good connection. Now, that works for analog. But is it going to work for digital? Because it's critical that all these very short signals get through. Um, so that's an interesting question. If I rework this so that the holes are slightly smaller, is it going to be reliable for this sort of project? As I say, analog, it's not really critical. I mean, if the connection is bad, you might get a bit of noise, but you're not going to lose data. So I've always been fascinated with the idea of sort of plug and play electronics, almost like Lego electronics. You just push the pieces into um, a backboard so that they just fit and they're all laid out nicely. Then you load a particular piece of software and it just works. So yeah, this is almost like my ultimate aim of Lego electronics. And then on the EDA, uh, Easy EDA uh, website, you can have a design for the board and you can also upload um, an attached file so that you could get hold of the board, get hold of the various components that fit on it. The uh, Arduino file is also there, so you can just grab everything you need to just get an instantly working machine. Um, that humidity seems rather low. It is quite warm in here, I suppose, but I just want to check the humidity sensor by bringing my really rather damp sponge up next to it. Get it quite close but not actually touch it and yeah moisture is drifting across from the sponge onto i don't know what that white thing is on the front of the sensor is it paper or something like that that that's raising the humidity that is being displayed fairly significantly good I'm actually struggling to find things to say about this because it is just so simple. You just plug in the modules and go. Um, this name, Arduino Playboard, it just came to me when I was laying out the PCB. Um, but I have subsequently done a search for the name Playboard and it is used on one PCB that I could find. Something to do with the Raspberry Pi. So possibly I may need to think of a new name. And actually, I'm just wondering if my viewers, you lot, can think of um, a name better than Arduino Playboard for this sort of concept. It's kind of plug and play, but I don't want to use those obvious cliches. Now, these holes in the board, I'm just wondering how constant are the sizes of these DuPont pins? Are they going to be so sufficiently constant that it's always going to be a good interference fit in here or is my idea of having the PCB act as a socket is that a bit optimistic the uh, pins have a square section so we've kind of literally got um, a square peg in a round hole but in some ways that's quite good because it has four points of contact or possibly three just this just came loose just now and it suddenly gave those erroneous numbers and i had to just push it down a little bit to uh, get the connection back and this wasn't very well thought out was it having the word arduino <laughs> under the socket so that it's completely blocked now of course if i go to 
a landscape format. Mm, actually, that's going to be tricky because the uh, lettering would have to be written vertically. All these issues, you see. But that's really it. My new PCB is really just a concept of a plug and play Arduino subsystem of microcontroller, display and sensors all neatly laid out on a board. Push them into the board, load the sketch and away you go. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, knock seven bells out of the like button. That seems to be the meme these days. And uh, for the moment, cheerio.